Got a new plane today. This is the FMS Moa powered glider. Uh, the Moa was um, a real world glider, quite a successful one that was designed all a long while ago, I believe in the 1930s. I said a vintage glider. That was a straight glider that had to be towed. It was not powered in any way. This model is powered, but so it operates independently. It doesn't need towing. But the um, original mower was uh, a towed glider, um, and I say quite successful. But uh, I think there's only a, one well, couple of them still flying in the world today because you know, it was a long while ago they they came out and they didn't make that many of them. Anyway. Um, there was somebody else, this this model is is a fairly new, I don't think it came out maybe last year or something from FMS. Um, somebody else, some other company used to make an RC mower, looking quite similar to this, but I think a little bit larger. They had one for sale up at uh, Flight Testing Kitchener, and I had my eye on it, but it was, was a consignment sale. Someone had put it in for consignment sale, and it appeared to be clearly damaged in a number of ways. For one thing, I think the... Um, folding propeller was broken and, and they wanted a fair bit of money for it so between the fact it was damaged and they wanted a fair bit of money for it I didn't invest in it but I like the looks of it um, I'll put the transmitter on here maybe I've got it programmed into my DX9 now I bought the plug and play version so I've put one of my standard little lemon DSMX receivers in it that, uh, that was for anything standard where I'm not trying to put stabilization in and I don't need more than six channels. I use those standard little lemon DSMX um, six channel receivers. This was actually the last one I have on hand so if I need another one I'll have to get more or steal one out of something else that's not really flying anymore. Um, I've got the flight battery already in here though it isn't connected up. Um, where are we? Oh yeah, it comes up here. This is a mag. It comes up with a magnet here and comes off. This was, um, it took a little bit more work to assemble than, say, like your typical Horizon E-Flight things and whatever. It wasn't a difficult assembly particularly, but none of the, you know, the, the, the control horns for the control surface didn't come installed. They all just came in a bag, so you had to install your, uh, you know, you had to, the servos were installed, the servo was there, but not the, not the control arm and the control horn, so you had to install your control horns by screwing on the little backing plates, and then connect up your, you know, connect up all your uh, clevises, well, set, set your receiver up first and center all your servos, set your receiver up so you could... Uh, control it and center the center all your servos and then adjust the clevises so the control surfaces were centered which I think they are we'll see when we turn it on and we'll test them again but I think they are um, and you know naturally put the uh, tail and the wing halves on and whatever this is not something where you would want to take the wing off to bring it to the field I don't think really you know you've got these two plastic yokes that sort of screw down over the two wing halves and putting them together and getting the yokes up and getting them down is a bit fiddly. It's not something you want to be doing every time you come to the field, I don't think. It's not an easy wing removal. But then again, it's not that big a plane. I think you generally just want to put the wings on and leave them on permanently. Um, when it came, this wire to connect the battery was in the middle compartment. You make sure you pull it forward through to the front before you put the wings on, else you won't have any way of connecting the battery. Um, okay, anyway. So, uh, now I've uh, set it up to put the center of gravity. I've got marks on the bottom of the wing here for where that's, those are the extents of where they say to the center of gravity should be. And I had to put the battery, as you can see, I bought a new battery to go with this. I might have had a battery that fit it, but I didn't want to use some old battery of questionable provenance. To, so I bought a new Gens Ace 1300. I have to use an adapter because I couldn't find one with a they want to use a JST adapter, which is a bit small for a 1300 milliamp hour two cell. It's, you know, usually used for lower power batteries. Uh, I couldn't find anyone who's actually selling a 1300 milliamp hour two cell with a JST connector, so I'm using a little adapter. And as I say, I've got the battery. You see, that's the, bat that's the mark for the back of the battery. So I've got the battery not as far forward as it could go, but certainly a lot for further forward than the maximum back it could go. Let's look at these wires here and make sure we're trying to connect them the right way. I mean, there is a groove in there as well, but 
Okay. Now, can I get the... See the problem? There's not a lot of room. There's not, not a lot of room anywhere in here. There's not a lot of room for the receiver. There's not a lot of room for the wires in there. It's, it's, a, it's a thin fuselage. Okay. So, this is the maiden flight. I, obviously, I just assembled it. I've never flown this, so... Right. Uh, what rates are we on? That's low rates. So we got throttle cut on and we're on, well, let's go to high rates for a minute and just see if we've got much difference. Not a, not a lot, Frank. Not a lot, frankly. Right, left, ailerons. Rudder, right, left. Up, down. Uh, by the way, yes, I actually, uh, to create the... Uh, model for this in my DX9. I just copied the model from my Concendo, took out all the trims and deleted the Channel 5 that the Concendo had for the flight mode. I also had to reverse all of the, all of the flight control channels. Aileron, elevator, and other, all, rudder, all needed to be reversed. Uh, actually, that rudder might be... it's pretty central, but... It might, uh, just trimming the rudder a little bit there. I think that's about as straight as you're going to get it. I don't know, it's hard to judge. I'm putting a little bit of left trim into the rudder there because it seemed to me that it wasn't quite centered. It was a hair out. Okay, well, let's see if this thing will fly. It's kind of overcast and... Uh, damp this morning and fairly cool, but um, no wind really to speak of yet. So we can't throw it into the wind because there really isn't any. I guess we'll throw it, just so we got more room, we'll sort of throw it up runway. And it's actually got little grooves there to put your thumb and finger in. <sighs> Whoops, terrific. Uh, hmm. Maybe wasn't giving it enough power there and I let it fall over to the side. Uh, no, the other way. Just trying to retrim the ailerons a little bit. Okay, let's try again. Yeah. Just need to give it a little bit more power to get it up there. Whoa. That's gliding, of course. <sighs> Makes you appreciate the Concendo. The Concendo is such a beautiful glider. I mean, it just glides. Well, and so does the Radian Extra Large. See, this is it's gliding quite nicely. I mean, you know, and all that. But it's coming down fairly rapidly for a glider, right? It's not maintaining its height as well as you might have hoped. Because it's smaller as well. Certainly got plenty of power to climb. It's got plenty of power to climb, but as a glider, you know, height maintenance is kind of nice. You don't want it to be losing height rapidly because, you know, I mean, even if you've got a thermal and the, the air is rising, if the plane is inherently relative to the air losing a lot of altitude, you're going to have trouble keeping it up. Well, we could maybe trim it up a little bit. Is that too much? Is that going to make it stall? Yes, it is. Yeah, see, that's it just stalls if you trim it up too much. I mean, it's certainly not bad, but it's not a great glider as a glider.
I'm just trying to see if I can trim it any better, but... Basically, I want it to descend as slowly as possible. See, it keeps going down. When I don't want it to. It's not exactly stalling, but... Well, and that's trimmed, I think, about as well as you can trim it. Because, you know, if you trim it up anymore, then it goes up a bit and then goes down. Of course, if you trim it down more, it comes down quicker. I'm trying to trim it so it glides with the minimum descent. So it glides, let, as, 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 as sticks, as far as possible, stick off level without porpoising at all, without going up and down, but not coming down any faster than it needs to. And that's about the best I can do with it, I think. I don't think I, you know, I can trim the, I don't think I can trim it any better than that. Well, hmm. Got plenty of power with that battery to climb, for sure. No complaints. Oops. No complaints about, well, flaming heck, that was not meant to be a loop. I was just, that was not meant to be a loop. It was a loop, but it, it shows it can loop. I wasn't trying to loop, really. I just got a little over-enthusiastic climbing there. Just trying to settle it back into a glide. We will bring it round, maybe, and see if what we can do in terms of minor aerobatics with it, looping it and whatever. That wasn't meant to be a loop, though. As I say, I just got... I wasn't, uh, you know, my angle of vision confused me and I got it going up so steeply that it fell over backwards and did a loop, which wasn't, it wasn't meant to do. Yeah, well, that's about it. I think that's its, uh, that's its optimum glide, I believe, with that battery. <laughs> bug repellent on, but the darn bugs are still biting me. Nice looking plane. I like the gull wing. That's the one thing, that's the thing that seduces me most about this. I like the gull wing, I like the color, color scheme. So it's the sort of, uh, uh, it's the sort of uh, aesthetics of the plane that attracted me. Blithering bugs. Terrible. Well, I guess it's still, you know, morning. It's nice for flying, but Go away! Good Lord, these bugs just won't leave me alone. Get out of it! Really annoying. Do a loop on purpose here. No. no, that wasn't very successful, was it? It's it's okay, but it's not the most controllable plane. You know, well, it's not meant to be an aerobatic plane. Yeah, it's certainly got plenty of power to do a you know a pretty much a standing loop. Which you'd expect, I suppose. Not, not go over by the trees there. Well, hmm. Um, oh, and now I, again, I didn't really set the timer for that. I, I, oh, blathering bugs. I had the timer set to six minutes, which is what they got the Concendo set. I never run the Concendo to six minutes of motor time, mainly because I'm spending most of my time gliding with the Concendo. Um, you know, I can run it, keep the Concendo in the F for half an hour with two minutes of motor time. And by half an hour, even though it's only had two minutes of motor time, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, just the general control of, you know, powering the receiver at the servos and things. This seems that, you know, it does need, you have to put the power on. It, 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 it climb, it, perf you know, it performs a lot better, oddly enough. It's a glider, but it performs a lot better. Yeah, see, that's had two minutes of motor time now. It performs a lot better. It's a lot more controllable when you put a lot of power on. 
if you want to start climbing it and maneuvering it. It's fine to glide it, of course, with no power and whatever, and just keep it level. But if you want to start doing any kind of violent control of it, climbing it, rolling it, whatever, it doesn't actually control that well until you give it a fair bit of power. It controls a lot better if you really punch the power up. When you punch the power up, it's, you know, fine. But it's a bit balky in terms of obeying the controls uh, if you try and do anything at all strongly controlled without, without a lot of speed and power. <sighs> Sorry, these bugs are real pest. I'm going to bring it into land now, I think, anyway. I think that's enough for a proof of concept maiden flight. Um, uh, and we'll see, that's two minutes of motor time, basically. We'll see uh, how much of the battery it's used. Base, actually, very similar capacity battery to what I'm running with the Concendo, because the, the, I have the original Concendo, not the new Concendo Advanced. So it's, it's also running off like a 12, 1300 milliamp hour two cell, although in its case using like an EC2 connector, I think. This is a JST. Watch out for those. Those trees are the nearest thing you've got round here to a problem. This is meant to be a landing. We're trying to come in for a landing here. It has a wheel, and we're a bit high. There you go. Uh, not bad, eh? Uh, yeah, I could have brought it out. It would have been a neater landing if I brought it in a bit lower up the first place. Oh, gosh, I've been bitten several times by these confounded bugs. Always like to put throttle cut on before I approach a plane after landing it. If a throttle cut's available. Uh, a leaf on the... Anyway, um... No major problems with that. Um, I'll maybe stop recording for a bit now and I'll check the battery out after I, okay, uh, I get so. it back to the bench. I'm going to try and take out this battery here and see where we stand on it. Whoops. So yeah, that's a brand new Jens Ace 1300 mAh 2 cell. And... I'm trying remembering which way to connect these things up. 7.87, this is after two minutes of motor time, 3.93, 3.94. Uh, so I could probably have run it for another minute or so of motor time comfortably. Um, I didn't timer how long the actual flight was there. Um, but, uh, you know, in terms of actually elapsed time, I'm sure that I, the ratio between flight time and motor time was nowhere near as high as the Concendo. Almost nothing is. Well, the Radian Extra Large is pretty good as well. The Radian Extra, they, they, of the various gliders I've tried, I had a Hobby King Walrus for a while, sold that on. Didn't hate it, but didn't do anything much for me that other things weren't doing. Um, of the various gliders I have tried or have now, the, the Concendo and the Radian Extra Large produce the best ratio of flight time to um to battery time this is not going to rival those because it, you you can't get as quite as slow a descent on it and whatever uh, but it's quite nice i can understand why i had a little bit of a problem the first time i launched it um the trick basically is i would say just put full power on when you launch it it, 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 especially in lower rates, it doesn't control that well at low speed. Uh, you know, it'll glide fairly evenly, but it doesn't correct very all that well at low speed. It's much easier to control if you put full power on and get it go really get it going. So I think uh, definitely the way to launch it is to you know throw it at an upward angle, put full power on, then throw it at an upward angle. Then you're fine. Anyway, there you go. Initial maiden flight of the uh, FMS um, mower. Oh, I, um, I didn't say, I just bought this in a Labor Day sale like, because I like the look of the mower and I came across it. 120 bucks Canadian, um, plug and play. 
in a Labor Day sale. So I'm certainly not regretting buying it, not at all. And it's a nice looking plane, isn't it? I mean, it's just, there's something seductive about that gullwing. I like that. Anyway, so I, I certainly don't regret buying it. FMS MOA glider.